everyone welcome to this design practice module 16 and 17. So, the next uh, major uh, element for a concurrent engineering setup are basically the product development methodology. Uh, we started with organizational uh, you know needs, then we started with all the requirements which are going to be there uh, by the organization. We also discussed about the communication structure. So, the fourth issue here which is of importance and one of the major elements of concrete engineering environment is what is the methodology that is being used for product development. Okay, so, I just call it product methodology or let us say we call it product development methodology. And uh, <coughs> you know that uh, product development being a very complex process involving number of people from various functional areas. The methodology for development of products really includes all the uh, activities involved in customer requirements planning for example, the total product development process, the design of manufacturing process, the design of the product support process. So, all stages of life cycles are somehow rather involved in uh, determining what is going to be the product development overall methodology. So, the various uh, sub elements if we wanted to consider what kind of you know development methodology elements may be involved. So, one could be that the whole development process is based on optimization techniques okay. and optimization could be within a sense of a central theme of how customer is satisfied. Okay. So, optimization in the sense that whatever uh, increases the customer satisfaction index should be a basis for carrying out the optimization for all the designs that have been developed. Uh, Similarly, if we talk about let us say data libraries for different products which already exist. So, in this particular case you know the theme could be consistency that what is new, what is already there. Uh, so, it should be a part of the development plan or the development methodology. Uh, we can also talk about development process as such. Okay. So, is this uh, something which you need to be in your control or you want just the free ideas to flow. And so, there can be a central theme of controllability that how much of it you really want to control uh, in terms of you know the process of the product development because obviously, there are going to be schedules which you need to meet as a management and the management initiative always going to be how to control such development process. Yeah, the methodology can also be uh, formulated based on whatever the reviews uh, you know are received at every stage of the development process. So, there should be typically non interrupted product development even if you know the reviews are detrimental. Uh, there should be a sort of a adaptive planning process which can uh, formulate the strategy in a manner which is commensurate with the, the reviews obtained. We can also think of process measurements as a part of the development methodology. So, the process method measurements could be uh, based on a central theme of what is going to be the information content of uh, the measurements. Is it going to uh, be a part of influencing the development strategy? Uh, for example, when we add robustness to a design, there is always almost the case that we learn from certain failures which are there related to the quality of performance, functionality so on so forth and add on to the product uh, and there you need process measurements okay, in the developmental methodology to make the design robust. So, the central theme could be related to what is the kind of information level that is needed for uh, the design to make itself robust with every iteration uh, and so that is how the product development methodology uh, can shape up. So, that can be one of the important elements. Uh, then also it can be about analysis architecture whether it is going to be a, a hierarchical uh, architecture or what is the level of hierarchy it could be even a parallel architecture. Okay. So, uh, you need to sort of think of what are the analysis strategies uh, which are to be used for development uh, of a sort of a map about how effective is the development process. Okay. So, it could be hierarchical or non hierarchical. Uh, that is how the analytical architecture could be. And then finally, 
in the verification you know in the product development methodology there can be a verification step uh, which talks about compliance to standards for example so the uh, different elements like communication for example or the requirements or the product development methodology also have their further categorizations into levels a b c d depending on what is going to be the available uh, <coughs> complexity in each uh, let's just simply consider this uh, has been taken from the cals uh, c electronic systems work group report and that is how the source uh, lies here so this is about uh, let's say the organizational elements which i have already sort of discussed earlier so just as we did for the organizational uh, elements you know in the last uh, one or two slides and we categorize them into various levels we are going to do the same thing for the requirement elements now and these elements are for example definition definition could be uh, sort of an itemized requirement either at level a or so there is a based on this itemized requirement there is a database which is available so theme is thoroughness so how uh, well defined uh, the <coughs> requirements are how thorough they are uh, for setting up uh, the considered you know concurrent engineering environments uh, there could also be a level b which talks about requirement traceability so first level is of course what are the itemized requirements another is how easily you can trace it traceability could also mean cross referencing for example equipments or uh, items needed for one part could be cross referenced by some other user very easily so there is some indexing which is there probably so that is at level b so some organizational aspect added to what you call requ itemized requirements in the previous uh, level there could yet be another level c where uh, you talk about requirements waiting that not only they are indexed properly and not only they are itemized properly but then you have to you have certain kind of weighing depending on what are the requirements you know of the particular trade uh, so you have certain requirement trade study capabilities added on to the uh, list of items for uh, which, which which are required and then of course uh, there is the highest level d which talks about unambiguous specifications uh, this could be executable specifications according to the environment real time uh, changes in the specifications as needed you know in uh, the definition of the requirements so this is typically the most desirable level when we talk about uh, concurrent engineering environment however all companies are not at this level and so therefore it's important to trace what level they are in and what should be the uh, constitution of the should be concurrent engineering atmosphere or environment uh, also mentioned is the schedule types so you can see the theme here is running in parallel mostly schedules could be either based on task duration individual tasks are to be split up from the whole work study and gantt charts could be plotted and scheduling can be done based on what are the number of tasks which are involved there could also be a sort of a uh, precedence requirement put in all the tasks what precedes what and then there is a calendar based schedule which talks about what point of time in the month or maybe on a planning horizon which is slightly more than day uh, how the schedules are sort of uh, running parallelly to each other there could also be event based schedules uh, event driven program management tools can be used uh, for example if there were a shortage uh, in some material then what is the kind of uh, task that exists uh, for meeting that particular type of shortage so it's a event based uh, and so, so there are several such events uh, which formulate the basis of making this level c there could still be another higher level d where we talk about continuous addition of value to the enterprise so this is a sort of a new scheduling paradigm that how it can be better by the day uh, how the schedule can improvise plus delta every time and so that kind of a schedule based on the learning uh, of day to day is more or less a real time uh, schedule based on or schedule based on real time learning so that is the most desirable okay for concurrent engineering environment similarly you have planning methodology based requirements where theme is adaptability so on the first level uh, could typically be a sort of a bot bottom of strategy of collation of all task definitions um, and then use of task management planning tools to sort of see how they are labeled with respect to each other so uh, split up to the very very uh, fundamental level of individual tasks 
then you have a methodology which talks about top down determination of the task definitions. Okay. So, you talk about requirements uh, related to satisfaction uh, driven work, you know, and then what is a uh, breakdown structure for a particular task. So, up to that level, there is some kind of uh, so some kind of uh, inclusion in the planning methodology. There could also be yet another level where we talk about synchronization of the concurrent interrelated tasks, how in time they are spaced with respect to each other, uh, are they interrelated processes, do they have a uh, planning tool to uh, lay them out uh, parallelly in time as well as you know sequentially. So, uh, that is what the level C for such planning methodology would be. And yet another level T, the highest level, it is basically the iteratively refined task, the abstract plans, which are environment driven. So, if the environment changes, the planning methodology changes based on it. Okay. So, this is something which is the most latest, you know, and the most I would say uh, highest level of requirement elements that could be offered to a concrete engineering by a concrete engineering environment. Then there is of course, validation or specification to requirements where theme is accuracy. So, we talk about validation to itemize requirements which are laid out well laid out in the specs or um, validation with respect to the given the particular specifications, there may be some interrelated constraints which are there. So, validation of the design to that constraint that could be the level B. However, this is a much shorter planning horizon, but if the horizon were about the end use requirements of certain product or system, then the accurate environment would typically look at the validation to that end use requirement rather than just locally focusing on what is going to be the next step. And then of course, uh, there is still another very complex level where we talk about validation to end use and product business strategy as such. So, there is a life cycle concept embedded in this kind of a level. So, in a similar manner, we want to do the same kind of uh, structuring in terms of different levels for the communication elements. So, you know that communication elements again have been split up into uh, working data management, uh, where the theme is control. So, there could be a certain level A uh, of certain concurrent engineering environment, which talks about just local individual data management uh, requirements. Okay. So, it is related to just workstation release control systems, think about operator punching the chassis number of a car, which is uh, passing the assembly line or assembly stage. So, uh, this would be something related to uh, just that workstation based data generated, which keeps an individual data record, you know, for uh, number of vehicles or chassis, chassis of vehicles, which have rolled up. There could be a slightly higher level, where you have structured data uh, for project wide sharing, maybe some useful information is uh, uh, generated out of the data that is there, which would help you in sort of uh, further management of uh, related to <laughs> different futuristic tasks. So, we configure some of the data to uh, find out an implication of the data uh, on the general work environment okay, of any uh, system. So, then there can yet be another level which talks about a program repository of working data. So, we talk about just uh, a longer time horizon here, where we have stored from few months or few years and there is a central program database on which everything has been recorded. So, from there could we have some working data, which gives us experiential learning from the past. And then of course, there is again a, a very high level uh, environment, which talks about enterprise wide repository of working data. It is not only related to a local environment, but across the domain of the whole uh, organization, how data is being managed uh, and uh, how it you can extend that database to variety of sub functions related to direct uh, working of the environment or even indirect working. So, that is what the different levels would be for the work data management. Similarly, you have communications related to data acquisition and sharing. This is a sub element where the theme is accessibility. So, uh, there could be the first level which talks about as needed data extraction. So, if you are requiring something, there is a proper procedure for requiring uh, for showing your uh, you know justification and then through network workstation and file management systems, you could actually trace that data or extract that particular data. You are not however, exposed to the whole data. 
Uh, there is also another level now in this data acquisition which talks about data supplied by most knowledgeable sources. So, these are the most reliable data and you have certain degree of control on that in terms of accessibility. Uh, there could be some communication involved here. So, network communication is typically uh, what is enabled in such environments for doing that most reliable knowledgeable uh, source data sharing. There could also be again a third level which talks about data available as generated. So, it is like almost the whole control of the data for a particular task or task structures. So, you could do some program sharing here, some central based storage on the program network through which you could actually get a tab on most of the data or share most of the data as uh, needed by your particular domain or area. And the third and the fourth category is again typically one where there is an enterprise wide availability of data. Okay. So, not only um, it is the, the data structure uh, or the data acquisition or sharing scheme is just functionality driven, but it is available across majority of the functions uh, to each other. So, that is another uh, mode of how data can be acquired or shared. So, typically this is what is needed as a highest level in concrete engineering uh, environments. Then there are again uh, communications, communication elements related to experiential feedback where theme is again experience and uh, here there could be the first level which talks about only design guides with rational intent, checking with structured query capability that kind of a program. Uh, there could also be a level B which talks about consolidated design uh, guidelines with rational. So, uh, just not a single design, but talking about the overall let us say concept or idea uh, which is involved in the uh, uh, you know in the existence for an organization that can be uh, or that is made available as a consolidated uh, design. Okay. So, you can check with structured querying uh, and your capabilities uh, are enhanced by integrating certain rules through which you could actually go into different portions of this consolidated design guide. Uh, there could be another yet yet another level of uh, experiential learning which talks about again the rationale and the weighting for each product development rule, checking with unstructured query capability with impact weighing. So, at this level we are thinking about packing some kind of artificial intelligence <laughs> which looks into a data structure with some kind of a query capability and uh, with giving a sort of a weightage or an impact to what would be the most useful query in a particular situation. So, you kind of defining or driving the rationale also by using uh, weighing factor. So, that could be a level of uh, you know experiential learning. And then finally, the highest level which is about a continuous sort of a dynamic uh, change as you learn kind of a situation where whatever uh, lessons are learned through feedback are almost immediately uh, routed into your unstructured query capability. So, that uh, you know the impact assessment for every uh, question that you pose for getting feedback sort of varies based on the real time aspects which are uh, there uh, in the in the dynamic environment that you are working in. So, these are the different levels again of uh, experiential learning. Similarly, there could be decision traceability in terms of uh, who is the owner of a particular decision. So, there could be an individual uh, decision making rationale uh, or an ownership that could be used as a model for a certain environment okay, for work or you could have repository with structured keyword searches which talks about pinpointing to a certain uh, you know. Uh, center for a certain decision to emerge something like that. There could be an, uh, another level which talks about the project decision rationale ownership repository with unstructured keyword searches. Uh, this typically would talk about a legacy level where uh, there are certain decisions uh, which have been made through a certain uh, you know thinking process or logic and uh, it has a certain kind of an ownership history associated to a team or a set of teams which may have been involved in such a decision making. So, uh, making such a repository with some kind of unstructured keyword search could be uh, one of the basis for doing decision traceability. Uh, you could also have another yet another level of a concurrent engineering environment which can talk about probably uh, again instead of just having a project 
overview, you have a program overview for the whole uh, set of activities which are involved in maybe a complete product line or something and not just looking into a specific activity related to a certain aspect of a product. So, over the whole program of a certain line which has been created, you have this decision, decision rationale and unstructured keyword search uh, option available for all such decisions which have been made in the past for you to learn from them. And then of course, there is an enterprise wide rationale uh, with again unstructured keyword search which talks about at what levels, what decisions have been taken and who are the concerned owners okay, for running the whole enterprise as such which may be cons consisting of several programs, not only one program. So, we are talking about more like a global uh, decision traceability matrix okay, which could be there. So, these are again the four levels. Uh, we can talk about the, the fifth uh, you know uh, communication element which is about the interpersonal uh, relationships or communications. Team has is equality, so there could be uh, sort of member specific terminology uh, that could be a kind of business environment uh, and this terminology can be shared with each other through electronic communication. There also could be some kind of a common terminology uh, which could have multiple views okay, and then there can be some translators to translate between let us say terminology used in one section or part and terminology used in the other section or part in terms of uh, personnel who are owning those two the different sections. So, there could be equal input from all sections which would create some kind of an impact which will increase the overall knowledge level and based on that this knowledge tool can be used for all the kind of communications, interpersonal communications uh, between uh, the different sections. Then you still have another level D which is totally based on the knowledge based perspective. So, you have any generative tool which works on what knowledge uh, sort of comes out because of these interpersonal uh, discussions to be used for uh, some overall goal for the organization etcetera. So, this is how a uh, communication element setup can be split up into multiple sub elements and their different levels. Uh, I am going to also look at the product development methodology and then start with analyzing a certain situation of introducing a sort of a line of product for which we see what is the existing environment and map into what is going to be the, uh, the should be concurrent engineering environment for something. And so, process improvements can be based on that uh, and decisions can be taken at the management level on the basis of which are those elements or which are those uh, influential dimensions which should be mapped in finally for the final environment that the organization should be in. So, with this I would like to end this module, thank you very much. Thank you.